strike, so Staff strikes it from the back of the net. Fantastic strike from Darcy Campbell. All oh, that'll tumble through. Parry. Kick off now by hook or by crook. I've managed to smuggle that one beyond Matthew Taylor. No mistake, second time round either. Oddington gets some breathing room in quarter four. Finding the goal. And that seals a vital win for Oddington. Really hard fought one today. Good morning, almost afternoon, and welcome to Uri TV for this game between our Ladies Ones and the University of St Andrews. My name is Alistair Condy and I will be uh, attempting to guide you through this game as best as possible uh, for the best of the rest, top of the, the bottom six here in the Scottish Women's Premiership. Head straight in though, look at the table for the Scottish Premiership, uh, which is looking now in the split for Arringston's perspective, looking very good. Game in hand, uh, so to go against Inverleith. Um, University of St Andrews having already played them this is definitely going to be a tight game for both teams uh, both teams are going to be looking uh, for the win here and the teams themselves Arrington here uh, with being Easter holidays a more depleted side than what coach Gareth will have been looking for but still strong team uh, Claudia Proven stepping up again from the twos after making a very successful debut against Hillhead a couple weeks ago as always, Darcy Campbell leading them out as captain. And for the University of St Andrews, a similar sort of situation here. Uh, not as many um, players as they're probably looking for. Names might stick out to Uddingston fans are Julia Chapman, former Uddy player, now obviously at Union St Andrews. Be interesting to see how it goes with her playing her former teammates. Definitely going to be an interesting game here. Weather, for the now, is holding up. It's uh, slightly windy, if you do hear some wind noise in the mics. Um, but for the now, sun is out. Pitch has been watered, so balls should move fine, but always a forecast for wind and rain going on. I am joined as well today, bit by bit, by Gordon. How are you? Yeah, a little bit of juggling to do today, but we're managing just fine, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a weird um, s swap of roles that I'm, I'm doing this bit, and you're just... You're here at my side, but... Um, taking over with the uh, the camera work today, camera work, commentating, anything else you want to multitask all at the same time? Uh, look, I, to be honest, I think that's plenty enough, but <laughs> if you've got any more plates you want me to spin, yeah, why not? Let's go for it. Well, I mean, I could give you an extra job. Uh, as always, we are doing some of our social media today, where you can follow us at Adi Hockey on our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and our TikTok. And tonight, or today, sorry, not tonight, it's not the night yet, we are filming a behind the scenes of Adi TV. Uh, as we look to get ready for the final games of the season coming up over the next couple of weeks. One more game uh, will be live here for the ladies once on the 20th of March in two weeks, which is something to look forward to and mark in your calendars. And we hope to have some exciting content coming out across our social media pages for um, that game. So keep your eyes peeled. And if you're not following yet, make sure you follow. And obviously, if you've come here from anywhere else make sure that you uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel to not miss any live stream or any of the highlights we put out across the week. Just the two minutes now though to go uh, to the game as you see Uddingston are just trying to finish their warm up. We'll see St Andrews though are moving their way onto the pitch. Umpires though wanting to get the uh, the game moving with just two minutes until pushback. With uh, no other games here at Uddingston, it's actually good because it's, um, it's running everything on, on time. 
as we were saying, obviously with uh, our captain Darcy, we've got our mum watching live from Northern Ireland. It's always nice to have uh, Gay's support. We always get a lovely message um, every week when she's watching. So as always, let us know where you're watching. Send a message uh, to the the Addy Hockey social media. And while you're there, obviously follow and like our recent posts, and you can see what's coming up soon. Just seeing now, both teams are getting themselves prepared for the game now, the last couple of minutes. And I now get to say welcome to Finn Halliday. Hello Alistair, how good are you? Is it afternoon yet? Can we say that yet? Just yeah, about, it's good afternoon now. We're looking forward to this? Yeah, definitely. I think a uh, two week break off, nice to get back into the swing of things. Do you think that will have an impact on them coming from this this two week break, or is this going to give them fresh legs for the game? Yeah, I think I think it goes one or two ways. If if you're in a, a nice run of form, you you almost don't want the break to happen. But <laughs> season's a long long period of time, so maybe two weeks off isn't isn't the worst thing to recover from small injuries and come back with a fresh mindset. It's also a more depleted side than what we're used to for Ruddings, and that's going to be something that's playing on the mind, or just go out and play your game. I think you've got to you've got to play with what you have, don't you? Um, they've got a strong core of the squad, <coughs> and, and they'll be looking to to kind of continue continue how they've been playing. Yeah, I know from my season this year with the threes, it's been um, <laughs> consistent playing with one or two subs. So um, I I feel the uh, the struggle when you come to this, but Arrington look to have push back here as you know just get ready to start Liv Mullen to take push back here for Arrington uh, for this Scottish Women's Premiership match between. Our ladies ones and the University of St Andrews. It's a busy week for uh, Uddingston and St Andrews. Our ladies twos played uh, St Andrews on Wednesday and are playing them again away today. Uh, always the best of luck to them uh, in the return fixture. As Liv Mullen gets game underway for Uddingston. Uddingston now just going to look for their tempo. Anna McWilliams looking to put that ball straight to Orla. Orla though unable to find it's sticking Maisie there. That's a very quick start from Anna up the line. Look, definitely looking set the pace. St Andrews now just looking for the turnover here. Moving up this left hand line. Umpire though. Just giving the foul to Eddingston, taking that pressure off that St Andrews were trying to apply early in the game. Darcy Campbell out deep inside her own 25, looking for the outlet here. That ball though, only able to find the stick of St Andrews player. St Andrews now just looking to turn themselves round onto this right hand side now. And St Andrews also now, he would win the first foul within this 25. He would apply more pressure on Twiddingston here. Ball though, it trickles at the back for a long corner. Twiddingston though, making sure every man's behind the ball. Uh, putting that pressure on St Andrews, which forces the Turn over here for Eddingson. And unable to find anyone. So Andrews now able to make the first entrance into the D of the game for either team. Not able though to clear that there. Great shape, Verity though Verity. able to clear that away. Confident start for Verity as well. Definitely. Nice to get one save in early and, and kind of settle the nerves. Definitely a strong clearance as well. It's safe to not give away a foul more than anything else to push that ball out the side. Good steal there on that far left hand side from Lexi. He would now just try and start counter attack here for Eddingston. Just looking. To force a foul or find the pass. Able to find Liv Mullen there in the middle of the pitch. Was able to now take it inside the D of St Andrews. It's just 
Unable though to find the stick there in the middle of Teagan. Strong counter attack. That's what we want to see coming from an Arlington perspective. Yeah, definitely getting getting up the pitch early and getting ahead of the ball is key to, to kind of a good counter attack. So, so nice to see them kind of doing that from the outset. Sanders there, looking to make an aerial. Not really the longest aerial you've ever seen. And unfortunately, though, Maisie unable to control it, but is able to place it out the right hand side. So, kind of getting danger away for Arlington, forcing Sanders now to. Play this ball in the back, looking for a ball straight through the middle though, but unab unable to find the stick of an Addington of a St Andrews player. Interesting to see how St Andrews have gone pretty much full press straight from straight from the first whistle. I think, um, as we we're kind of saying, it's it's an important game for both teams here. I think you you want to see the, the pressure starting early. As see Tegan now making her way inside the D. St Andrews keeper making herself big. Maisie there. Trying to get a quick shot away there as the ball was played round the back. Unlucky there for the young player, but positives from Arrington CS. It's an Andrews keeper getting herself big and Maisie just trying to use some speed there to get the ball moving, but just wasn't able to come off her stick well. So Andrews keeper probably does enough there just to, to get an edge on the ball and, and kind of put Maisie just. Maisie off. More than anything else, she made herself very big, which got herself. Yeah, it, it, she, the ball couldn't be played over her, which I think was probably the important thing yeah. from her perspective. Um, for Maisie, it's just unfortunate. It could have been a bit more of a touch on the ball uh, would have helped, but definitely something just to bounce back from now. As Anna Williams moves that ball quickly and into deep, trying to quick shot, just placed at the back though by the St Andrews player. That was a Foul for man in the middle, but was very quick to then take it, and just the San Andreas players just seem to let her run. Yeah, uh, going quickly is a kind of two sides of the coin. You've got if you go quickly, you can start a nice quick counter attack, but if you go too quickly, then you you leave yourself isolated against more defenders. Um, so sometimes you can do more harm than good, but that one kind of working in our favour. That was there. Lucy just trying to uh, kind of play a quick hit into the D, but with the ball being raised from the hit, umpire quick to set the uh, the ground rules here uh, not wanting that ball being raised as Anna tries to seal the ball here but out the sideline anyway for Addington ball Listen, I just taking the time putting in between the defence here just looking for Slow outlet, Susanna looks for this ball up the line. Just coming off Maisie's stick, but Tegan just about, just unable there to keep that ball in. But good ball from Anna up that line to uh, Maisie and Tegan. Just unfortunate not to come off Maisie's stick well. This is Andrews now. Move into the turnover. Looking for a ball now down this right-hand side. Looking to just drive the baseline here, but and so winning long corner for St Andrews. Both teams kind of setting a pace quite high in the game, looking for outcomes at either end. It's going to end to end game, it's going to end up being. Yeah, definitely. I, I personally, I quite enjoy games like that. There's a lot of chances in the game, and there's nothing worse when you go to a game, there's only two chances in the entire game. So um, at least makes it entertaining for the spectator. Yeah, and plenty of people down the side here. At Arringston in the in the um, April sunshine, also a wee bit of snow yesterday. It was a bit cold this morning, but good to see a good amount of people coming down to watch. And obviously, for everyone joining us, always thank you for joining us here on IDTV. I'm sure it's a uh, a lot warmer watching live at home. It's now St Andrews here. Just look to move this ball across the pitch onto the left hand side, but again forced out onto the uh, sideline. Pressure there from. See uh, onto the uh, onto the defender, just unable to then find the next pass. Darcy there looking for Lucy in the middle, but only able to find the Andrews player, and again unable to find anything. Very able to make the save there, and Darcy strong to win the foul. Good teamwork there from the Arrington girls to. 
Not really allow a, a clean shot on goal for St Andrews and able to recover after the pass from Darcy. Definitely some, uh, definitely some kind of first game back rustiness. It's, it's always the case. First game of the season, you'll see it. Especially there's uh, first game back after uh, indoor as well. You'll you'll see there's a lot of uh, kind of basic mistakes that people wouldn't usually make, but because you've not been in that scenario for a couple of weeks, couple of months, then then that's the kind of unfortunate side effect. Yeah, St Andrews here looking to. Uh, to move that ball there, just a stick tackle from Lucy. Um, umpire quickly to bring it back though. Sanders again, dangerous place here, looking for an attacker. Darcy though, able to clean it up, moving herself into the midfield now to find the next pass, which is Liv Mullen here in the, the middle, but unlucky there not to win the, uh, the foul of her body. Maisie here. Putting pressure on St Andrews. St Andrews looked it. Just transfer this ball around the back here. Waddington continuing to set high press and lots of pressure onto the players. Lucy again. Well, a stick tackle, probably on a one of her last warnings there before a <laughs> card. Bit early in the game for that, but hopefully that sort of thing doesn't happen. St Andrews now able to get themselves onto the Waddington baseline and winning the first short corner of the game nine minutes into the first quarter uh, St Andrews have uh, won the the first short here just umpires here stopping time to allow uh, Uddingston to get their protection across good to see Gareth the one that's uh, <laughs> bringing it over for them this is him he's getting his steps in <laughs> the dedication you want to see from your <laughs> coach. Wellington <laughs> <laughs> now though, with their protection, just being kind of told now by the umpire how the uh, the short corner will work here with two whistles we played, one for time to be started here and another for play. There in the goals is uh, St Andrews looked to set up two castles at the top of the D. St Andrews Looking for a left slip here. Verity though able to parry it away. Again though, second shot. Just goes wide on the left hand side. Strong short corner though for St Andrews. They're able to get one or two clean shots on uh, Verity, but very so, uh, able to comfortably save. I think it's a kind of deceptively hard house. Hard, um, deceptively hard. I can't even speak anymore. <laughs> Deceptive how hard it is to make those saves in a crowded D. Um, when you've got people crossing over your eye line, it's quite hard to, to get a, a good boot on it. Yeah, as we now see Lexi here with a counter attack looking again to challenge St Andrews' keeper, but keeper able to keep that ball on the ground and out to the sideline. Definitely looked a crowded D from up here, and I think for Verity more than anything else to keep that ball down flat, yeah. I think is the, the, the kind of best bit there. Lucy now able to drop this ball into defence. Just allowing Darcy now to rotate this ball around the back. Tana McWilliams looks for players in the middle of the D. Maisie here continuing to make herself busy as Anna puts the ball back in towards the D, but Sanandra's able to push it out onto the sideline once more. Sanandra's defence seems strong when they're set. I think it's th they've been taken by counter-attacks, but when they're set there, they're able to get the ball out their D quite easily. Yeah, and I think that's something they'll, they'll definitely be working on during their season, is, is being able to... As Liv Mullen, no, able to win a short corner, as we say that. Um, Commentator's curse. Yeah, I, I'm really bad for that. I really should stop <laughs> talking. I'll just sit in silence. Uh, Liv, they're able, though, to um, keep cool, uh, spin her body around and win the foot off of the, uh, the St Andrews defender. We get to see Uddingston with their short corner attempt. We've already seen one from St Andrews, and so second of the game early in the first quarter. See so it going towards to get that deflection. Very well worked, short corner. 
Yeah, very, very good to, to kind of go straight to an option is, is something that's very rarely seen in the men's game, but I know the girls are very keen on it. It was a uh, kill cam and collected, which is uh, something you like seeing from these early girls. I'm going to go for all the, I'm going to try and get all the um, the things we can here. As you see, the replay here of the short, just going up to that top for Anna to slap it in for the deflection. Very cam, that was, that was quite clean. It's nice seeing when it's probably nice for them as well. Um, they've worked hard on their short corners. We know it's yeah. it's good that they're now able to get results from them more than anything else. As Anna there, Armit Williams here on the pitch, just taking a shoulder to the the side of the face. In a end-to-end -end game, anyway, I think there was obviously going to be a wee bit of physicality in the game, just with the uh, the pace more than anything else. We know Anna um, likes to get herself stuck into the game, so uh, it's good to see she's on back on her feet, moving around. Yeah, I think I think they top, uh, stop the time there more for precaution than anything else, but it's nice to see that kind of safety's put first. Yeah, it's good. To game stopped. As always, though, time has been stopped twice in this quarter, and uh, our clock uh, here on Audio TV is not linked to the umpires, so it may say 14 minutes here. It's very much likely to be two minutes behind that, um, but we don't know for sure. So when it gets to the end of the quarter, we are um, always unsure how long is left, which is always a fun game of guess. But Arrington here able to force a turnover from St Andrews' foul and move their way uh, back up the pitch. Move across to Emery there in the back. Sandra's out. More than anything else, able to win the foul off the foot of Lily Crichton. But unable to then find the next Sandra stick. Now Lucy just injecting some pace to move through the middle and into the D. Looking to get a shot on goal. Again, no. Sandra's keeper. Camley able to get that ball outside the D. Sandra's keeper is my uh, MVP. I want her, I want I want this to continue. It's 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 both keepers have been very uh, calm and and making themselves keeping the ball safe. Where nothing else has not been any kind of dangerous kicks in the air. It's been very easy to watch them just play at the side. Yeah, I've I've uh, only personally been in goals once. And I think uh, every kick I made went out head height <laughs> through the D. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I think I'd be in fear if you were in goals. <laughs> I think I can safely say I think I was asked once to, to be keeper and I was quick to say no chance. Hey though, St Andrews looking for this aerial. Only though able to find the sideline. Just now allowing Addington to get the ball. And uh, put pressure back on St Andrews. Nice to see uh, Julia Chapman playing for St Andrews as well, next um, Uddy player, so she'll know a lot of her our old teammates quite well. I was I was saying at the start, is it hard coming back to play against your, your former team or do you think it's nice more than anything else? Uh, I, personally, I moved to Addington in kind of 22. I found it quite emotional to kind of play against a team that I had kind of grown up with. We do see though, that was uh, Lucy and was it Teague in there working well together to win that short corner. Second short corner for Addington there. That's kind of caught off guard there. Speaking about your, your uh, emotional no, journey in hockey. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. I know, like, for me, playing against the uni or Jotway, that sort of thing, it's always it's strange for me, but that's because uni and club are, are kind of different, yeah. but never had to move club, or never moved club, sorry. It's just got a weird feeling there because your enemies then become your <laughs> friends and, yeah. and your, your friends then become your enemies. So I think it's quite a weird thing to, to kind of have to deal with. See Addington here now. Set themselves up again with two castles. Anna Williams moving herself though onto the left hand castle here. Obviously a success from the one corner we've had so far. Ball moved to live. Play that slap in there, but keeper able again to kick that ball very nicely away onto the side. I think that was the uh, plan there for the shot. I don't think the injection no, was where they not. wanted, but they were able to make it work somehow. Still get a shot on to goal, which is more than nothing here. That's the kind of main thing. When if a corner breaks down, it's, it's so key to to stay composed and and try and work a shot. Um, it's kind of quite off-putting sometimes when when you don't get the clean injection and the clean stop. 
uh, Addington though, he was a transfer spot round the back and now into the right hand side. Are seeing Anna now looking for something inside the D. Lucy's able to just move it inside. Now Claudia's fighting, winning the foul just outside the D. Again, as I was saying, the uh, clock we have is not completely tied up. So there's still probably a minute or two left in the quarter. Uh, Fredingson here looking for their second goal. There, St Andrews to look for their equaliser before the first quarter time. St Andrews able to win that ball off Lucy's stick, but only as far as Anna McWilliams, who just comes off her foot for the pressure to be taken off of St Andrews now. Deep in their own 25. I'd safely say I'm glad I'm up here purely for the wind. I feel like playing hockey in wind like this just... Well, I've always said I'd, I, I don't mind the rain. It's, it's the wind I yeah. hate. I've played some horrible games in very windy conditions. <laughs> I think it's it's bad memories more than anything else for this. But both teams are still able to keep a really high pace in the, the game where else as we come into our first quarter time with uh, Arringston... Leading one to nil. Now's our time where we get to tell you all the exciting things happening here at Addington Hockey Club. Uh, currently, with the school's Easter holidays, we are running our Addington Sports Camps where kids have the chance uh, of getting to play rugby, hockey, and football. I know that um, I came through these camps myself um, back when I was younger and first started playing hockey about six years ago. Uh, we've still got one more week uh, starting on Monday until Friday so there's plenty of chances for you to get your kids involved I was down on uh, Wednesday and started playing football haven't played football since I was about 10 I had a fantastic time and the kids kicked lumps out of me so I was I was great, I went home quite <laughs> injured but definitely um, something to get yourself to get your, your kids involved with over the Easter break uh, get them outside into the um, mostly nice weather here at Addingston uh, if you want to see more from behind the scenes of the Easter camps, there's plenty on our social media uh, across uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok at Addy Hockey. Uh, plenty of photos and videos going up um, and stories as well from um, my time uh, down at the uh, the youth camps. Uh, you'll also be able to find while you're on social media, you'll be able to find quite a good video of our ladies ones training from a couple of weeks ago where you got to see the intensity they're injecting in the game here today. Um, they were doing end-to-end -end games uh, from about a quarter and a half of the length, and it was a, a very interesting game. So, as you see on your screen, at Addy Hockey on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. I take it, Finn, you're following. Yes. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a keen watcher of the, <laughs> the social medias. I always have to put you. I have to put someone on the spot every time yeah. when I'm here. Definitely, though, um, from an Addingston, Addingston perspective, a good first quarter. I think it's always key to get the first goal. Um, I was just chatting about this with the gents once. The, the first goal kind of always settles a team um, and it allows you to, to kind of be more relaxed. Now though, both teams get themselves back into the park for the uh, second quarter here. Thuringson leading that one goal from the short corner. Definitely be looking for more for both teams. St Andrews and Thuringson have been putting very high pace in the game as Liv Mulling gets the second quarter away. Anna McWilliams stepping herself into centre mid after being in defence for the, the first quarter. My my game when I'm up here is um, counting the positions that Anna plays. Because um, usually it's every single one of them. As Arrington just Orla there unable to control that ball. Now allowing St Andrews to get a bit of control. For just a stick tackle there from Orla to give St Andrews a bit more time in the ball again looking for this aerial just going under Kirsty Ratton's stick now let's St Andrews move their way into the Addington 25 and into the D as well looking for another outcome having already won a short corner but can only win the long St Andrews here now looking down this left hand side moving on into the baseline Able to though, Arrington able to clear that ball out the right hand side. Tegan now just trying to find the next pass, but can only find St Andrews' stick. St Andrews now moving this ball backwards into their defence. Liv Mullen though putting the pressure on the defender to force that mistake onto the sideline again. It's uh, quite impressive to see. I know St Andrews are on the, the lower end of the table, but 
the layers they create in the game, being able to have a kind of deep layer, a mid layer, and a, a nice and high layer, kind of gives them a nice, nice kind of platform to build off of. You do see at lower end of the table. This is the top of the oh, is bottom it? six. This is first and second. With the, well, Addingston still have a game in hand against Inverleith. Um but no, this is this is first and second of the the bottom six here, which is why it's probably an important game for Addingston. Yeah, I, I know how good the girls were to miss out on, on the top six and, and by such a fine margin. I know the, the boys have been there for for a couple of seasons in a row before this year. Um, so that I know how frustrated they'll be. So it'll be good to kind of be able to set a standard that, that they can build off for next year and, and hopefully push that top six, if not put top four. Yeah, lots of positives, I think, uh, for both uh, one's teams here at Addingston with the Gents ones in the top six and uh, performing very well in the top six still. Um, yeah, we're uh, we're hanging on to that fourth <laughs> place by, by the, a string. And adding some no Annamit Williams here moving away into the D and winning long corner. I have got a point out. I'm hoping people noticed it. There was a, a lovely hit from Kirsty that was taken by a Liv. So well. Bouncy ball and everything. And Liv took it. And that was it. And I, I just had to mention it. It was fantastic. <laughs> See Kirsty now looking to his ball into the D. Sandra's defender just letting that ball roll away and out for Anna McWilliams to take that shot at the top of the D but only onto the left hand side of the goal. St Andrews are so compressed in their D it's, it's a really hard thing to break down from a Raddington perspective because if the St Andrews basics are, are on point then they it's kind of very hard to break down around the edge of the D. And are they able to control the ball to play the ball into Liv? Lexi just looking for another shot onto the keeper. Keeper though padding out the back to give away the short corner. CS so yes, again with is that short Alexi. So just keep her confident to get herself out and put that ball out there, but an unusual decision to parry it straight out of the back. Understandable why. Uh, there wasn't really much other option. Um no matter what I think there would have been danger. Yeah. But um definitely a tough one. I think as you were saying with how congested the the Diaz for St Andrews short corners are the big thing that Uddings are gonna have to look for because winning the field goals are going to be yeah, quite hard. Definitely, definitely. As we see again, <coughs> two castles set up here. Anna Williams not involved in the castle now, far on the left with Levin Darcy taking their place now. Orla Miller to inject out to Kirsty for Darcy to look for the hit. Too high though. Short corner, first shot on goal has to be at backboard base. Was it backboard height? Backboard. backboard height, I can remember that. I was going to call it the baseboard for some reason. That was. Well, it's, a, it's it's the age old debate is if the ball lands at the height of the backboard, is that okay? So, I'm I'm not too sure. But I know it just has to hit. I the think my my point. interpretation has been as long as it hits the backboard, yeah. I'm fine. Um, unless there's obviously danger with that. It was going much further higher than the backboard hitting the post, but it was um. Cam from Darcy though to I think there was more pressure put on her from the first runner than expected but was able to pull the ball around and yeah. still get a shot away um, as we were saying I think more than anything else from the short corners just getting a shot away is a positive because you can work on that more than anything else but oh going back to Darcy Campbell deep inside her own half Anna though able to take away the pressure from Darcy and play across to Kirsty Ratton who's able to win that ball for a sideline for Addingston here Addingston here now moving into St Andrews 25 as the uh, sun has now disappeared. Just looked outside there and it got suddenly quite dark. <laughs> and again, this run through the middle into the D, but winning a, a long corner for Addingston now. Addingston just slowing the game down a wee bit here with this long corner. Darcy looking for the ball through the middle. I think that's come off the stick of St Andrews player, so once more, another long for Runningston. Again, back to Darcy Campbell, who looks to see what's in the middle of the D. Plays this pass in to find Lexi, who looks to get a hit there. St Andrews player, though. Very confident in herself and also very brave more than anything else, putting her body on the line, but able to use her stick to get the ball away and take some pressure off for Ruddingston. Uh, for St Andrews, I apologise. 
I think some definitely with the more possession in this quarter. You've all seen Stan just had a couple of chances, but not really seen much of Eddie in the quarter yet. Again, Darcy here. Just look and see what she can play through the middle before playing out right hand side to Kirsty Datton, who looks to hit the ball. Where anything else wins a foul off the St Andrews player. And they're able to put pressure on who wasn't five, so wins uh Arrington. Another uh, short smart corner. Play from Kirsty there, noticing that she's not five and, and being able to take it quickly and run right at her so that she can't move and and then therefore has to concede the, the short corner. It's the uh, sort of smart play you like seeing um, more than anything else. I think having that kind of game knowledge just to kind of go for it, there was no hesitation, yeah. it was just yeah. move. Again, Orla Miller on injection. Anna and Darcy at the top with Live Off the Park now. Ball played out, looking for this deflection once more. Lucy looking to play this ball around the keeper, but again, keeper getting herself down on the ground, being big, stopping any ball from going through or under her. Lucy quick to take that to win another short corner there for Addingson. Great skills to just be able to, to place it on a foot there and, and therefore win another corner and hopefully be able to, to have a nice routine from this. You're also seeing, I think, in the second quarter, a lot more confidence from the Addington Girls here. Um, I think they're starting to get a wee more into the game, able to kind of use a wee bit more of the skill that they have. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the longer a game goes on, the, the more comfortable you get, and there's always the kind of jitters at the start of a game from from the build-up. Addington here with another short corner. Player getting sent back. The St Andrews player? Yeah, St Andrews defender. Breaking line in the uh, running out there, so sent back to the halfway line. St so Andrews, that means only have three in the goal now uh, to defend a short corner from Addingston. Looking for Anna McWilliams to play a slap. Was looking for the deflection, but I think Lucy was kind of played out by the, the St Andrews player. Was quite got herself in a good position to stop Lucy from getting a deflection. Yeah, I think St Andrews have, have looked at that first goal and, and realised the position that, that Lucy gets herself into. and and have therefore put someone there to kind of stop that happening. Anna McWilliams very cleanly taken down that, that aerial from the St Andrews player. And again, unable to get herself into that position there to secure the ball for Uddingston. I can understand why St Andrews are looking for that aerial. There's a high press coming from Uddingston, but when the aerial's not really getting further than about 25 metres... Is there better options they could look for? It's it's hard because as soon as they play the ball, you'll have you'll have Addingston right in right in their faces and and put the pressure straight on. So yeah, it probably is better to kind of play it around. But it's an aerial, if effective, can take out two or three lines. So then just now again playing this aerial, uh, again taken down by Lily Crichton there in that corner. St Andrews out, moving their way into Addington D. Able to clear that ball out is Addington. Yeah, I think that was quite a crucial kind of intervention from Emma there. If, if she wasn't there, then, then that's probably trickling in and making it making it back to 1-0. Emma, another player stepping up into the, the ones for this game. Definitely makes herself a good impact as Kirsty's now able to try and control this ball inside of the D, but... Unfortunately, it was onto her own foot, so another short corner here for St Andrews. Another chance for St Andrews to try something here. What I always love here is when you look at the Uddingston defence, is Anna doesn't wear protection or anything, so she just stands like a superhero <laughs> pose. Just while she's waiting, catching her breath, I'll just stand. See Addington now into the goal. St Andrews have set themselves up once more with their two castles here, very similar to Addington. Playing up to this top, no looking for the left slip this time, but Anna, first runner there, fantastic run out to stop that ball. Just forcing the ball out the back and now for St Andrews long corner.
Swanger's here looking for a way into the D and finding it. Now just looking for a foul, but Darcy Campbell, confident in her ability, able to clear that ball out the side. Yeah, great, great low tackling in the D from Huddingston. It's it's can sometimes get quite tricky in that that area if the ball goes kind of 3D, but nice and composed. You can always tell Darcy's a good uh, indoor player with how she tackles in the <laughs> D because she's always down like what you're like in indoor. That's what I aspire to. <laughs> I want to be Darcy Campbell. <laughs> Here we see Darcy though. Playing this ball to Anna, who's now back and centre back. Looking for Emma Reed here, but that ball just too far ahead of Emma, unable to get her stuck on the ball. Now allowing St Andrews to turn over here and look for an outcome. St Andrews ball trickles into the middle. I think that's what she was looking for, but it still works. But Lily able to tidy up for Huntington here as the St Andrews player. Gives away quite a reckless foul. Um, just there forcing her, her body onto Lily. Uh, Lily being smart and winning the foul more than anything else. Kirsty able to find Emery on that left-hand side now. That ball being transferred around the back. Stillingson trying to drag the game out a wee bit more. Just get the... Uh, Attackers running, use some of their energy up and also waste a wee bit of time here in the second quarter. It's in the last kind of five minutes here. There's now Ball looks for the middle. He would find Lexi here. As Lexi speed. uses his pace to run through the middle, looking for the shot on the Sanders keeper, but Sanders keeper able to keeper. once more make a very confident save. You see here this turnover that Lexi was able just to force using that bit of pace and more than anything else, I think this is just defender is quite passive. Yeah, the, I think though that Lexi going 3D straight away is, is a kind of key. Oh, I see Lucy here. here now, moving her way in. I don't know what's got, it's a foot of an Addington player. As I was saying though, Lexi going straight away to 3D makes it really hard for the St Andrews defender because if, if she commits a stick tackle there, it's a, a pretty much a guaranteed card. I think there was kind of what we were saying earlier, but that injection of pace, Lucy was able to move that ball quickly, but I think the attackers weren't in the kind of best space to yeah. to find. The ball, I mean, if, if someone was in the right place, the ball the ball was in the right place in front of the goal there, but just obviously unable to um, find the stick of an Addington player, but I think you can, you're can you seeing the pros and cons of the pace that, that both teams are wanting to inject into this game. There though, St Andrews, a game of the 16, you're seeing probably one of the highest presses I feel like I've seen the, the girls set in any of the games I've commentated on. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, the old full press. <laughs> I think it just creates a, a great game for for hockey. See, my issue is I'm a centre-back, so I don't understand <laughs> how a press works. So I look at it and go, that's high. And it usually gives me the fear. That ball, though, unable to be controlled by Emma Reid. So St Andrews now able to take the shot. Emma, though, able to recover. Play the ball at the back. Giving Slanders another long corner, with which they've had now numerous. Still, though, just the 1 0 for Huntington. As always, though, a great crowd here down at Huntington for the, the ladies. Plenty of people have got themselves down to uh, watch the game, and obviously, we hope that everyone tuning in as well. Back at home is uh, nice and warm and out of the wind. <laughs> Obviously, you can follow our socials while you're here if you're watching us live. Uh, obviously, we want you watching the action, but we all know you're sitting on your phone at the same time, so you can always follow our socials at Addy Hockey on our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. I will get that spiel in as many times as I can today. I've only got one more game, and I don't think I'm going to be here for it, so I need to uh, make sure that I'm doing plenty of, of um, social media sprouting. Again though, Darcy with the ball just on the halfway line. Now looking to transfer this over into the far side as Anna's able though to skip Kirsty and play back to Darcy who looks down this right hand line or into the middle of the pitch and is able to find Teagan there just at the top of the St Andrews D. She looks though, to stick of Lexi McMillan the one able to find and straight on to stick of St Andrews. Now look, it's forced to turn over but Lily though able to tidy that up on her reverse. Find Liv Mullen here inside the San Andreas 25. Camley plays the ball 
Back to the defence, back to Anna and Darcy and to Kirsty. Now able to just look to find an outcome here inside the D and just keep it again, able to parry that ball away nice and safely. Making sure there's no danger here and um, playing the, the ball down out the middle. You heard the shout there from Darcy for an outcome. I think there's there's been a lot of kind of um, entries into the D but unable to then find an outcome with how crowded it has been. Yeah, I, I know they do a lot of work on, on being able to find an outcome. If, it, if it's not a shot, then being able to try and find a foot and uh, then obviously kind of force a kind of short corner situation. Orla here, able to force turnover for Addington. Just looking for Liv Mullen here. And this far side who moves herself into the D. Again, looking for this outcome here, but actually able to find it. I thought there wasn't going to be anything there. <laughs> um, I was wrong. And with that, also the final play of the quarter. Also the short corner will be played out, but it allows all ten of the Uddingston outfield players to um, move themselves up in support. Puts a wee bit more pressure on the uh, the defenders, but it also puts a lot more pressure on the attackers because it means you've now got ten bodies in the D instead of what seven. Yeah, we we had this chat in the first the first uh, couple of games of the season. If if there is a an overtime corner, what do we do? Here's the Orla injecting this ball in for Darcy here. Looking to Lucy and left slip, but again that's an Andrews keeper getting herself low down and again. And said though, going to fill away to bring us into half time. Again, we get to bring though some exciting news. Obviously, we're talking a lot about Anna and Lexi and Orla and Lily, all of which have just come back from their uh, time with the Scotland squad. Anna Williams making her first appearance with the senior Scotland team in the uh, three game series over the Easter weekend down in Wales, uh, of which they uh, got two very comfortable wins against the Welsh team. Uh, no, definitely that. Anna herself enjoyed it. Um, seems like they had a great time anyway. Yeah, I know um, personally my sister, another um, ex Uddingston player, was uh, got getting her first cap as well. So I know the work that, that they put in to, to be able to get to that. that and we place. also we also had though on our, the aspiring and the emerging Scotland squads. We had uh, Lex McMillan, Lily Crichton, Verity Shields, and Orla Miller, all um, getting time with the Scotland squads. Um, I know Lily Verity and Orla all got a little trip to Czech Republic. Um, oh, which very nice. actually looked very nice. I was seeing on uh, Orla's B was it was looking <laughs> it was actually looking nice. I'm like, I'm quite jealous of you actually. It's um, always good to kind of face teams that outside of outside of the UK they they play different styles of hockey and, and you can get used to kind of a different different way to play. Yeah, it was definitely a, a fantastic experience for all of them. Um, I know for any chance to get to play for Scotland's great, and um, the, um, the the old kind of brave system has um, been very successful for Uddingston. There's plenty um, of our players uh, involved. Now, though, we get to move on for a chance from one of our fantastic sponsors, Wallace Whittle. Um, we get to say a wee bit more about what they do. We are Wallace Whittle. We are an environmental, sustainability-focused building services consultancy. Our teams of talented and dedicated engineers in our six UK offices design everything that brings a building to life. Across electrical, mechanical, public health and sustainability. We are proud to support our local community and have worked with Uddingston Hockey Club for many years to support the growth of grassroots sport in Lanarkshire. That was fun. Thanks, Gordon. <laughs> got Gordon standing next to me here and hearing him uh, on the ad. I'm just getting a lot of Gordon right now. Um, <laughs> a bit too you much. You never have enough Gordon. Uh, can you? <laughs> Looking, though, into uh, the second half here, uh, what will both coaches be saying for both Uddingston and, and St Andrews? I think more for Uddingston is, is more of the same. They're, they're playing well. They're getting shots off. They're getting corners. It's now about being able to convert them. Um, I think that'll be their kind of main their main focus as well going into next season is goals are crucial and, and being able to keep games against the top teams um, it really tight is, is key and being able to if you get one corner be able to score it is, can, be, can, can be invaluable for St Andrews I'd say probably try and build themselves more into the game and kind of keep possession for a bit longer than they have been um, because when they get up the other end they've created some, some nice chances that 
that they haven't been able to, to kind of unfortunately take take anything from. And I think both teams definitely have been injecting a um, very high pace in this game. Definitely been end to end. I think we've, I think me and Gordon have called it tennis hockey before. <laughs> um, th it's definitely with not many subs because usually when we've seen this, there's been plenty of subs here. There's not as many subs as what we'd usually see from from either side. Is the game going to slow down, or do you reckon this will continue into the second half? Well, hopefully, with the the kind of two weeks off that the the girls have had, it'll kind of inject a bit of kind of fresh legs into the game. So hopefully, their fitness kind of carries through to the final whistle, and and we can kind of see that entertaining kind of high pressure hockey. It's nice because I, I I was speaking to um, Darcy and Liv a couple of weeks ago about this. Every game I seem to ever commentate for the ladies, I'm usually stressed out by that. But because the game's been so end to end, I'm enjoying it, and I hope. Uh, um, yeah. Everyone at home is enjoying it as well, as well as everyone down here. The uh, very windy Addingston. Um, weather, though, seems to at least be holding up, just the wind. Um, but for, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll at least get to see. But um, with the couple of games left to go for the gents, I get to now grill you on this uh, with the no. time we've got. How, how are you feeling for the, the prospects of how the, the rest of the season is going to look out? You know, we're, we're really confident. Um, I think it was kind of no lie that our aim for the season was was to get that top six. We were we've been so close over the kind of last two three seasons, kind of three points away roughly. Um, so to be able to kind of convert that, I think gave the boys a bit of a, an extra buzz. And then now to be able to push on to the top four and put pressure on on teams that that have been kind of stalwarts of that top four for the last kind of four or five years is key. And I'm going to be an awful commentator. How many games have you got left? Two. Yeah, two, <laughs> two. Yeah, two. <laughs> I'm glad you we've, know as uh, well. We've got two games, uh, two away games, unfortunately. Um, so we've played our last game here for the season. Um, we've got our first game against uh, Western, and then the last game is uh, against Grange. So the, the kind of top two sides of of, of the Premiership. And for our ladies, um, obviously, as I was saying, last broadcast, uh, the twentieth of March, in two weeks, we've got here. Um, you can obviously put in your calendars for our ladies' ones, but next Sunday got a cup semi-final at the National Hockey Centre. Yeah. Do you think this is a, a confidence builder going into that sort of game? Cup cup runs are always amazing. I mean, even in other sports, the football, you see the magic of the FA Cup, they call it. It's uh, It gives gives teams that that maybe miss out on the top six, like Addington, something to really focus on and something that's kind of a one-off opportunity and a unique opportunity. Um, and I think they'll be excited about the, the chance to, to be able to, to kind of showcase what they've been working on all year. Yeah, I, I mean you can correct me wrong. They're plate winners from last year. Yeah, I so never understand the cup system as the issue. The cup, if you go out early enough, you go into the plate, which also gives kind of the lower teams that are in kind of div two to be able to to be able to compete against the people who get put out again, kind of the prem. So uh, there'll be plenty on our socials. You'll find across the week. Uh, looking forward to that. But it's uh, National Hockey Centre next Sunday for the. Uh, Ladies Cup semi final at Glasgow Green, so I'm sure they'll all want you down. Um, it'll be great to have a, a good crowd down um, at the game, making plenty of noise. Um, as we get the second half now underway here, as St Andrews get underway as Uddingson again move up to set up this press. I hope that wasn't picked up by the uh, the, the mic, sir. Um, Liv Mallon with some, some fruity language for a Saturday afternoon. Um, but that ball was going to hurt. That was a, a straight hit to the, the kind of the heel or side of the foot. Um, I do not blame her for the language. <laughs> <she's> <laughs> no, I, it's a, I it's don't a, either. It's an awful feeling. But um, yeah, definitely um, fruity for a for a twelve o'clock game <laughs> uh, live on on other TV here. Lev though able to bounce back and force us turnover here, but a ball there from Lexi. Just unable, Lucy there giving away stuck tackle. And again there, like right now, forcing the turnover, but Snanger's giving away a stick tackle there to uh, allow Uddingson to keep moving forward as Lucy quickly moves herself into the middle here for Orla. Unlucky there, just losing the foul right in the middle of the D. I think was surrounded by Snanger's players, so really had no other opportunity to get a shot away on the keeper. Snanger's though, will be looking though to try and alleviate some of the pressure off themselves here. I see that as Liv Mullen able to force turnover. Lexi though. That's twice that, that Liv's been able to put real pressure on that St Andrews backline and, and twice it's paid off and, and getting 
balls it falls back towards Uddingston. Definitely the pressure that's been put on St Andrews. You've definitely seen I think cracks in this now as they struggle to find a way at their defence. Just kind of forcing mistakes here as the ball's played out onto the sideline. Kind of there's the the mental side of the game we talk about quite a lot, and I think that's what you're kind of seeing here for St Andrews with it when the pressure's so high. It's it's quite tough as I know it's like a, it's a, it's very tough then get yourself out of that 16 so you're going to start seeing the kind of mental side of the game as Uddingston continue this very high press yeah I think it comes down to Uddingston kind of having that ruthless mentality in the D and, and being able to to put away these chances that they have that ball though there just trickled away from Kirsty and stick Slanders now able to move themselves up into the Uddingston 25 just that pressure is alleviated now but Foul now just outside the D for St Andrews off the foot of Lucy there. Great composure from Lily there. It's really tough in that when you're you're trapped in that corner with two people on you. It's it's hard to to kind of be able to get anything out of that and she's done really well to get a sixteen out of that. It's always nice seeing as well. We've we've spoken about it throughout the season. It's it is a very young team, but the the young players in the team are confident on the ball and are able to make kind of decisions like that, which are instrumental to the entire game. Yeah, I think you see that with both the men's and women's sides. It's they're both extremely young sides, but it's great to see Uddingston bringing through players from their youth system and being able to put them in the the first team and and they all slot in seamlessly and and they all have a lot of confidence. Definitely, Uddingston youth program working well as we're saying with the moving into the Scotland based office and Andrews now move themselves into the Addington deep Lucy again no able to control the ball as Kirsty looked for Lily there on that left hand side was just unlucky there not to find anything again I once more apologise don't know if we can hear the uh, the wind noises coming through uh, the mics but definitely getting windier down here at Addington uh, as this game progresses as St Andrews are able to win another foul here Inside the Addington 25. Snyder's able to force another foul here through Kirsty Ratton. Snyder's now still looking for the equaliser in this game inside the third quarter unable to in this attempt here as Eddingson now look to force a turnover that ball though just going to go all the way out the back a bit too much on it there for, for Tegan to try and catch up to you see the Eddingson team kind of happy to kind of step up and take those yards and, and being able to kind of put on a press of their own now Sanders there now you're looking to force down this side but Maisie unable to control there I think St Andrews you're starting to see the kind of tiredness creep in here they're looking to play a lot more of these kind of crash balls and uh, it doesn't seem to be the structure that they, they did have at one point in the game yeah you, as you as you said about the mental stuff earlier it's it's interesting to think that maybe they think time's running out and that they need to start going that route one and and be able to crash the ball where in, where in actual fact they've got lots of time left to kind of build the, their way in Yeah, umpire there just correcting her decision there. I was going to say it felt like the wrong decision. The ball played off uh, Lucy's stick and into the almost shoulder, I think, of the St Andrews player, but it was being given as an Addingson foul, um, but it hadn't come off St Andrews' stick, so umpire correct there to change the decision as Lucy now is able, though, to get this turnover and move herself into the deep. St Andrews keeper getting low once more, allowing the defender there to clear this ball out. St Andrews keeper continuing to have a fantastic game here. I think Uddingston there looking to move themselves, they're looking to kind of go straight in and as close to the keeper as possible, but the keeper's getting low enough now that surely there's got to be another option at some point to, to get the ball past the keeper. Yeah. As we see, ball now transferred round to Hannah Williams, who looks for anyone there in the middle, but unable to find the stick of Lexi or Liv there, but it is another long corner for Uddingston. It's quite interesting to see how, f how kind of the back three of Uddingston set up quite a, a, like a, a flat triangle and then 
from that they can kind of distribute with a kind of high high ball uh, high ball pace and, and being able to work it round. Stanger's there, very calmly able to get that ball, much like we were saying earlier with that kind of indoor skill of just stick down there, forced to foul off Lily's foot. Addings now able to win the ball though in a dangerous place for St Andrews, but St Andrews able to recollect the ball here, turn the ball over and look for a counter attack here on Addingston. And Oak Williams not really agreeing there with the decision. Nor would I say that she was five there. I think uh, umpire making sure there's no tomfoolery going on. <laughs> tomfoolery. <laughs> That's well a great word. Great <laughs> word. <laughs> Addington now this time making sure that they're five as the uh, foul was called against them eventually. And now able to um, win the ball off this Andrews player. I think, and this is me umpire head on there's there's been a bit of luck there's been no cards for for either team here with with some of the tackles more than anything else umpires yeah. are doing well to let the game play on but i feel like very scrappy at points yeah as every every umpire is different and oh looks like uh, anna's taking a a tough one against the fence yeah i think anna there is just trying her best there to um to get that ball i think i i understand the the mentality there obviously Want to fight to go for that ball, but there's got to be a point on a hockey pitch where you have to realise that ball. You're not ever going to make it, and the only thing you're going to do is injure yourself if you keep running into that fence. Our, uh, our gents once captain knows quite well uh, <laughs> if you run into an immovable object, uh, there's only ever kind of one winner. Um, Stephen kind of ran into a wall in our, our one yeah, of our indoor sessions. I, so I I remember Stephen's had some um, some interesting run-ins this season. Um, it's he's, like uh, he's also ran into the post twice while umpiring. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I may as well uh, well I'm here. Oh, dog him in. To be fair, I remember going through youths with uh, Andrew Doherty when uh, he would just find a new injury every week. So it's more when I now stand and when I'm watching your games from the side and yeah. I'm standing next to his mum, Justine, and um, usually it's her through... Uh, through, her, through her hands that she's watching. <laughs> Andrew goes down and it's just, oh no, not again. Lev again there, making herself known here. And now, again, though, that ball just going too far. Well, well, um, well controlled by the keeper there. It's the first time we've seen the ball come off up in the air, but I think there was no real option for the keeper there. But no matter what, she had won the foul off of Lev's foot. Lev Mullen, though, definitely making herself known to that defence to make sure that she uh, can put as much pressure on again. Seeing this full press as Lev slips over the 25. This full press from Addington's really worked for them. You see, since they've kind of implemented it, that St Andrews really haven't been able to come up with an answer to get out of it. I think Addington, though, frustrations will start creeping in soon. As in this quarter, there's been no outcomes, but in general, after that first uh, short, they they tried the uh, the same routine again. Obviously, St Andrews were quite sensible in, in the way they were able to stop Lucy getting in for the deflection. But I think when Addington get their next shot, they definitely need to look for something different. I think the the keeper here. Definitely keeping Addington out this game more than anything else. As Lucy again moves herself into the D again, looking for these outcomes we're speaking about. St Andrews are able to clear it out there. They're D in onto the sideline. Lucy winning the foul there. Could have could have used the time there to run at the player, but not able to Claudia now after making a fantastic debut against Hillhead a couple of weeks ago making herself known there on that left hand side to win that ball and win the foul and Addingston as I was saying now win the short maybe I've, got, I've not got a commentator's curse maybe I've got maybe a bit of luck the opposite. here yeah, I'm, 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 so I'm actually going to keep speaking now <laughs> What what what's your I like doing this. What's your prediction? What are we getting for a short corner here? We're we gonna get a Darcy uh, straight hit or? I no. I'm I'm a big fan of the the slip left. That's that's my area. Oh so yeah. That's my kind of prediction. My my favorite goal and it's in it's in the highlights package that, that's at the start of all the streams is the the one from Darcy on that left hand side. It was injected straight to her and she just hit it. And I, it's my favorite one. It's the best goal they've they've scored. It's it's simple. It's easy and that's why I love it. See again though. 
these uh, two castles set up here for Reddingston. The ball trickling away onto this left slip. Lucy pulling the ball around the runner. Deflection or no, no deflection. 16 for St Andrews, that ball obviously just going wide left. It's probably quite frustrating from, from Lucy's point of view to, to have such an open shot and not be able to put it on target. Yeah, Definitely another short pass and another one without a huge outcome. Lev though, able to get that ball. <laughs> Lexi making sure though that the ball goes into the goal. Great goal, I think. Like shout out to Love for Love there the just for that. Yeah. yeah, it's been coming for two or three minutes. She's picked off three or four of them, and and now they're able to convert from one. Lexi very sensible to um, to to put the ball in the goal. But I was <laughs> the um, I think that I don't know if there was a shout. I don't know if I heard it of. Do I put it in? <laughs> and I don't know if I picked that up. Correct. That's what it sounded like. And I was kind of like, is that? Was she politely asking, can I score? But Love there. Fantastic, as we were saying, she's been putting so much pressure on those centre backs. Definitely been looking to force turnover into goal, and as we said, they needed to find some way to get around the keeper, and she lifted the ball, which was what was needed. Keeper, I think, unlucky there, getting herself out in time was quick to react, but now puts Harrington two goals to nil up. Being able to get that that two goal cushion as well, so key. I mean, one nil is one lucky bit of play, and and they're straight back in it. Whereas if if you've got two. You've got that kind of breathing room to kind of relax and, and enjoy the game a bit more. I think so, no. Not wanting to let the pressure go up there, wanting to continue this and try and get as many goals as they can here in this game. As Maisie looks there, Kirsty would try and get a touch on that, but unable to find anything else. Kirsty um, visually frustrated with that decision. I always say I'm glad there's not a camera in here because <laughs> I've I done the same facial expression because I. I I don't know. I'm going to go for crossover. That's my only guess because it wasn't a stick tackle. But umpire sees better than us, and we have a very different perspective up here in the gantry than the umpires do. I think we both know as umpires that we can't really say anything because we all get things wrong. Sometimes we all get things right. Yeah, it's I like think that's the kind of key part that people forget is that they're human and they make mistakes. Now Orla though on the ball here, looking for an outcome, but it's just off the foot of her as the keeper cleared the ball. She's put in a tough position there. She had two St Andrews players either side, and then the keeper coming in from yeah. the other side. So, she bringing the indoor rule of no, not allowed to box yeah. you in. You must be yeah. let out. St Andrews, though, as we said, when they're in that that those defensive positions, they are strong and they're able to force Eddingson out of the D. So, we saw that once more there from St Andrews as Lily now moves her way through the middle, looking for Tegan there on that far side. As Tegan now looks for Lily again, who's Great goal. He was to find the goal there off the Slanger's keeper. Really good teamwork there. It was the connection there off of Teen. You saw here she was able to pull this ball round into the D and play into Lily, who was just able to take that shot first time. Confident more than anything else there from young Lily Crichton. That's her. She's off off of her off of her Scotland duties and strength Straight scoring in. for Addingson. Addingson now. With a three goal lead as uh, Lucy just manages to trip up one of the girls here in the middle of the pitch. And now Addingston with a comfortable cushion here of uh, three goals to nil against the University of St Andrews within the last couple of minutes here of this third quarter. See here, Lily now working her way back into her defensive position here. And then winning that foot off the St Andrews player. Addingson are able to now take their time here with these fouls. No need to rush anything. But I, I, there's too many U's in this 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 pitch. <laughs> University of St Andrews are uh, setting themselves up here with this full press we've seen from Addingson. But Kirsty able to cl massive clean hit up that right hand side. Finding Lexi who wants to take the shot on goal. And is able to get a foot so is able to win... Short corner. Have you been counting what short corner are we on now? I've uh, it's kind of passed me. Uh, <laughs> I've got my that five maths and I think I've counted other things. Yeah, I think when I finished higher maths in COVID, that was that was enough for me. There was thoughts to do advanced higher. <laughs> that went not well for me. That did not go well. I'll stick to languages. I think some note with um, number 
something a uh, short corner of the game with uh, a couple of good outcomes uh, definitely some shots on targets but we'll definitely be wanting another goal here from the short corner like we saw in the first quarter once more of these two castles set up Lucy again in this left hand side we've seen a left slip Lucy though moving into the position for a deflection Stanger's keeper though it's interesting to see conventionally Uddingston would line up with three kind of defending the counter attack from a short corner but um, Gareth has kind of rolled the dice and, and left kind of only two two there to deal with a counter attack if it happens having an extra attacker in a short corner I've actually never I, I'm glad you noticed that because I've never even seen that before in general in hockey so it was quite unusual to see because I think I mean, my hockey knowledge is just what I did at under 15s and I've kept <laughs> doing it. And that's been five years now. Um, or six years now, sorry. So that way, it's a, I think it's a case of you, you very rarely see a team leaving two defenders. As you see, though, Darcy Campbell oh. here in the middle. Jeez, that was a bit of a dangerous tomahawk there from the San Andreas player. Almost taking the head off of either Lily or Kirsty. But Darcy, though, just seemed to pull up. I don't know if it's a bit of a... I kind of stick to the foot or... Or it was a hand, but she is walking, moving herself around the pitch. Seems to be something down her right foot or her right leg, but she continues to move. Just obviously taking that time to um, just recover. Back running again, though, so our captain, my captain, is um, still <laughs> moving. <laughs> oh, she's seen a breather, that's all it was. It's fine. Tactical stuff, isn't <laughs> it? <laughs> Again, our clock not tied to the umpires, so there has been a couple of stoppages, so there will be a wee bit of time still to go as Maisie now moves herself into the D, looking for the shot here. Great ball from Liv to kind of split that defence. Unlucky there for young Maisie, I think. It was a clean shot that she got. I thought it came off the, the keeper, to be honest, but it was just unlucky there. It's nice to see she's got the confidence to do that. Uh, at her age, I, would yeah. have, I think I would have shied away and... and and ran into the keeper. It's the young people of today, they're all they're all so confident. They'll just hit, they they will just shoot, and I wouldn't. I think more than anything else, will keep her from St Andrews getting herself out and putting the pressure on. Is been a kind of common theme of the uh, the game so far. But um, I think for that one, it, it put a lot of pressure on Maisie. They're trying to take a shot. I see Claudia now connecting with her fellow twos player Emery. Looking now to move this ball in the back. Kirsty though, not shy to just hold on to the ball here, knowing there's not long left in this quarter. As I say that, that is quarter time here. A successful quarter for Addington here, managing to score the two goals. Um, we've been talking a lot so far about our um, our youth programmes. I get to do another fun advertisement here. Youth Hockey is off right now for another week, but we'll be back on the 15th of April, I want to say, is next Monday. Um, so there's still another week of camps to go that you can get yourself signed up for. But obviously our youth hockey programme will return when the kids go back to school next Monday fantastic chance Monday, Tuesday, thir Wednesday and Thursday to get uh, your kids playing hockey and for your secondary school kids getting um, coaching by some of our uh, ones players like Anna and Emma you're seeing here but also I know Jed Campbell yeah. and uh, Calm Dara get themselves involved as well. I know uh, Jed's sitting in our joint flat watching so uh, shout out Mr Campbell. That's both the Campbells so, so brother brother Campbell and mum Campbell are, are all watching that's, yeah. that's how we're going but our Addington Youth Hockey has sort of, um, created some of the fantastic players you see on the pitch for both the gents ones and the ladies ones and across the club. Um, I know without Youth Hockey here at Addington I would not play hockey, I can say that one, because that was the, the reason I came to Addington was for how good Youth Hockey is. Um, our, obviously our coach, one of our main coaches at Youth Hockey is Anna McWilliams, our new Scotland star for the, the senior women's. So definitely some fantastic people you can learn hockey for and I know for a fact that Anna is a fantastic coach um, even at the, the youth camps uh, over the next week um, Anna and Emma work together to make the camps fun and enjoyable for all the kids um, and for me when I turn up um, I had a great time I w I'll never stop talking about it I'm going back this week because <laughs> I just enjoyed playing football again It's nice to see the, the ones players being keen to, to volunteer their own time to be able to coach the youth I know um, that was a big part of my um, kind of hockey learning was from older players that were in the first team and, and picking up little little bits and tricks off of it. Yeah, so when Youth Hockey returns Monday 15th, make sure you get your child along. It's a definitely a great thing to get involved with. And if you want to find more information about that, you can find all the information you need on our socials and website, Ari Hockey, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. 
Um, you'll see plenty of stuff from what we get up to at the youth hockey with both the primary and secondary kids, as well as more about our ladies' ones, gents' ones, and the club in general. Um, there's plenty happening with the last games of the next two weeks. Weird saying that. I don't believe it's April right now, but we have only got two weeks left of fixtures here at Eddingson, um, unless we've got a couple of other things coming up as well on socials as St Andrews get us underway here in the final quarter of this what was quite a close game but Eddingson now have been able to give himself a bit of a safety cushion but we all know we're hockey anything can happen and uh, Eddingson will definitely be wanting to come out here with the intent of getting more goals and St Andrews will be looking for blood to try and get themselves a result here St Andrews now working their way here through the middle and in towards the Addington D, managing to make themselves in. Just though unable though to get a clean touch on the ball. Anna McWilliams doing well to um, use a bit of physicality there more than anything else to, to force the player around. Nice to see St Andrews trusting that kind of the kind of screen player in the middle of the park to be able to pick up the ball, have the confidence and, and be able to roll with that. It was a, a great run there as well from the St Andrews girl, getting herself into the D and, and she kept the ball on her stick. It just it, it was the unfortunate thing of it just kinda kept rolling as yeah. it as it went on. But I think, I think there was yeah, also we've all been guilty yeah, of that at times. There there was the part there of I think she had she had two defenders either side of her, but um St Andrews I think have lots of positives to take from this game. Obviously just the, the result might be a wee bit frustrating to look back on, uh, especially losing two goals in, in that quarter there. See Eddingson though, now moving their way down this right hand side with that ball from Kirsty. Unable to find the stick of Maisie. <laughs> what I love looking down there is um, at the side of the pitch we've got some of our gents fives who um, I offered me a game today but then <laughs> the, the game wasn't played in the end. Um, and I was so excited for it. I was I was ready to play, to play hockey again. Um, after being out for a concussion I was just like, do you know what, I want to play but it's nice seeing um, teams still coming down together even when they didn't have a game on, um, still managing to make themselves down to support the, the rest of the club here. We see Lily using her skill, getting this ball into the D, but St Andrews now just looking to get the ball out here. Amazing there, fantastic indoor tackle to uh, get the ball back, working together there with Orla, who's able to win the long corner for Reddingston. Yeah, I think as you say, it's nice to have different teams interact with each other and I know there's a small number of the gents ones who had a session this morning that have stayed on to watch. Here's see Lucy again, going to take this shot. Umpire there. I mean, well, I'm going to give it to the defender there. <laughs> Played it off so well that the umpire had no idea what was happening. But that's going to hurt. I mean, you saw it because I mean, you could see it hurt her foot from the way it just took her to the side more than anything else, but um, a good shot from Lucy. I don't think it was it was going on target, but went in the short corner as an outcome more than anything else there. Um, but I just have to give it to that defender for just playing that off as nothing happened. It wasn't until you heard the the shout. I think I think it was from Darcy. You heard the shout of that was a foot. That 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 was a sudden the umpire was yeah. was kind of like all oh, right, okay. As we said though, umpires are human. Can't see everything, and when the D does get crowded as it does in this game, it is quite hard to see. I think some note looking for. Another outcome here in this short corner. Played up, live in the top. Who plays to Anna, looking for this left. Slap in. Live then, though, able to uh, win another foot off the St Andrews player. Even able on the slip to, to kind of be able to win another corner is quite impressive. It's Liv Mullen. Woman of many talents. Indeed. <laughs> I think she hates me when I commentate because I just I, I I'll pick up on everything that she does <laughs> and it's like yeah it's fun. Here we see though, Addingson again setting himself up here. Similar sort of outcome. Ball goes to Anna though at the top who looks for the hit. Nothing though from that hit. Just went straight to the back. So 16 for St Andrews. I thought it went off something, but. Obviously, no deflection. St Andrews though, still under lots of pressure here. As left there, trying to force the 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 split there. Maisie though, able to win that ball. Looks for Lexi on the left hand side post, but unable to. Lexi consistently managing to get herself in the right position, but then it comes off 
so many deflections that she's then unable to to get it. It's just unf it's unfortunate because it's 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 that one was unlucky there just to come off the and just stick on the way over. Yeah, it's, it's always encouraging to be in the right positions. Um, majority of the time, it might not come off, but as l as long as you're there, you're bound to get you're bound to get one in the end. Sanders looking now to inject some pace here to this attacker that's up front, but Ferretti there to uh, make sure the ball is secure. Anna McWilliams again in centre back. Um, and we just see though Kirsten, I think Darcy yet yeah, swapping on, so Arrington. Not fear to waste a wee bit of time here, so letting Darcy just run onto the pitch to take the the 16. San Angelo, even with the results currently going, continuing to set a full press. Probably after seeing the success for Addington here, wanting to keep their own game plan, but knowing that it can work always helps. Anna Williams now looks from down the line, but San Angelo's attacker fantastic there, making sure that her stick was down to stop that hit going anywhere. Now the team just need to work together to find this next pass to get themselves into the Addington D. Lily Crichton though, able to control this ball. Forcing St Andrews there to push the ball at the back to give another 16 for Addington. For wondering what I'm doing, I'm having to film a BTS today, which I was saying is going on our social media accounts. I was saying this earlier on. Um, you'll see that in the final week of uh, the Adi TV streams uh, coming up towards the 20th. So from the week beginning the 15th, there'll be plenty of Adi TV related content. So I've been filming a bit behind the scenes uh, as today goes. But um, I just always look a bit strange when I start filming and the commentating, as we see here. Adding some back in control with the ball after that St Andrews pressure. I believe we just saw a green card flash, but I'm not too sure how it's for. I miss them every time. I, I, who was it for? <laughs> uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I looked at the TV screen and I saw a green card. You can uh, you can use some of your uh, higher maths to count the players on the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say I um, I don't work on higher maths, but um, that was now what four years ago. <laughs> I can't tell you the last time I studied any form of um, numbers. <laughs> the issue is, is I can't actually count while trying to work out what's going on in the game. They're all moving too fast, so I'm just going to give up with the counting. So there might be a green card um, for everyone at home. We're unsure. There was a green card. I have had the confirmation from the, the, the cameraman and now green card watcher at Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything this man cannot do? I was saying I'm going to give him as many jobs as I can today. So that's that green card watcher now in the final quarter. As we see though, Addington note. Just able to catch up with that counter attack there for Darcy to control the ball. Get that ball forced out of the sideline here. Emma Deed now looking for a ball through the middle. Only able though to find the stick of St Andrews player though, Liv. Great pressure from Liv there to kind of stop her from throwing that aerial because if it, if it goes through then then the player's one on one with Verity. Yeah, I think Liv Mullen overall a fantastic game and getting herself everywhere in the pitch and not ever really giving up either. Um making sure that she's um constantly involved as you see again here. Yeah, she's involved again. Bit of physicality there. She needs though to keep playing. Um that's 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 Alistair speaking, not the commentator. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, though Arrington able to just get away from that wee bit of confusion and take the pressure away. I'm unsure kind of what happened there. I think there was the there was calls for the foul from what happened with Liv and the San Andreas player, but there is the whole thing of if the umpire doesn't see it, you have to keep playing. Um, yeah, definitely. And that was the shout that came from Gareth there. So I think Arrington lucky though to kind of get away with nothing there and, and regain possession of the ball. As you see though, San Andreas now with the ball again on the sideline. That ball though, just bobbling away there, unable for Lily to control it. I think you're starting to see tiredness creep in for both teams. The pace has definitely dropped in this final quarter, but 
a lot more sloppy passes coming from the Uddingston, Uddingston perspective um, as they're um, just trying to find their way towards the end of the match. St Andrews are able to get that turnover on Amp Williams. Again, no. Uddingston now on a counter attack. Lexi has Maisie further ahead as Maisie now makes sure to use that pace that she's got to take a shot here inside St Andrews D, but that shot was just well controlled by the uh, the St Andrews defender to ensure it wasn't really able to go anywhere. A lot of pressure put on young Maisie there inside the D. She was able though to regain possession in that far corner from us. And win the foul off the St Andrews foot. Addingston, just slowing this game down a wee bit here. You're definitely seeing Captain Darcy is still wanting the game to keep moving, but I can rest the team just slowing it down a wee bit more as Tegan here looks to regain possession of the ball. I know Williams was able to do it in the middle. Unable, though, to get a clean pass away uh, towards Lexi there at the top of the deep. I think you're right. You can see the tiredness creep in. I mean, I think Anna's got the right idea, though, there, but the execution kind of getting towards the end of the game is, is, is kind of petering off. For both teams, we're in anything yeah, else. There's, there's very... Uh, there's a lack of subs, so both teams have been have been playing almost full games here. Um, I mean, you can see it, especially for Addingston. We know how often we would we would change a, a kind of forward line, and I think yeah. that's what you're seeing the most here. Is, is there is going to be tiredness creeping in for both sides um, as this last kind of seven or so minutes of the game plays. I think Gareth will just now be looking for some some basics hockey with kind of stick to stick passing and and working their way around teams. That ball now, just able to get into the right-hand side, as um, able to find Great. the goal as well. You could see that coming there. Uh, the pressure was going on through St Andrews. I think it's an able to play that ball around the top of the D here. You see Dan Williams, just able to find Lexi. We'd said how strong St Andrews have been in the defence, but I think more than anything else there, Lexi was unmarked. Um, yeah, and had the time. And um, as you said earlier, Lexi's been in, in the right position all day, but unfortunately there's been there's been little deflections and little nicks that meant that she's not had the chances that she's she's wanted, so to be able to kind of put one of them away will be really nice for her. Let's take so Arrington to four 0 here in this Scottish Women's Premiership clash between Arrington and St Andrews. It's the top of the table clash for Arrington and St Andrews in the bottom six of the Premiership, but Arrington still with the game in hand. Um, with Inverleith to play for Reddingston. I think for Adi, if this game finishes 4 0, it'll be nice to kind of be able to to prove to themselves that they should have been in that top six and, and be able to to mentally have that, that kind of note to themselves. Keeper there actually done very well to make sure that wasn't dangerous. Um, kept that ball down and, and played it as far away from players as she possibly could. Lovely um, ball in there from Anna, just, yeah, just probably there. one step ahead of the attackers. Just there, I, I think that's what we can. You can see that tiredness kind of creep in there from um, the attacking line. Who, especially as we've been saying, Malev Mullen has been putting some shift in with uh, running side to side and putting a lot of pressure on the St Andrews defence. St Andrews though able to alleviate that wee bit of pressure by pushing this ball. I think that's the thing though side. as well with with the full press. It's it's a lot more running than you would do if you sat half court. So you'll definitely be able to see that tire, uh, players will be getting tired now. Yeah, Arrington definitely just looking to play down the clock here. St Andrews are able to force a turnover on that 16 from Emery and move their way into the D, but Kirsty Ratton's there. As always, the, the brick wall that is Kirsty Ratton. Um, my f it just the d I love the defence here in Addington. I just It's every time I watch them, I'm, I'm loving it. Um, but I feel like Kirsty's always so cool on the pitch to just kind of collect that ball. and OK, it went out the back, but it's better than anything else at this point for, for Addington. That ball there will just trickle out the back here. I think, though, there's a foul for St Andrews. I think that's just clipped the back of uh, Liv Mullen's heels there. Absolutely shocking from Liv Mullen. <laughs> <laughs> St Andrews now able to step themselves up, though. They've had a lot of pressure put on them in the last two quarters, and I think now we'll be looking for something here. Darcy there. 
was trying to complain that the ball went straight in. Um, I don't think Darcy realised the ball that was taken from outside of 23. <laughs> uh, for anyone that doesn't know the rule, you cannot play a ball straight into the D when a foul is taken inside of that 25 mark. So from that quarter line inside the D, you cannot play the ball straight in uh, without it going five metres. And uh, anybody else in the pitch though can go straight in no matter what. I think that was just that wee bit of confusion sets in when the ball's just outside of the 25. Uh, you'll then kind of claim for it and then go, oh, I was wrong. You also hear me say 23 and 25, because I don't know what the correct term is, so I'll use both. It's 23 yards, 25 metres or something. Oh, I'm not a clue. Maths. I know it changes every two <laughs> seconds. <so. laughs> I was playing walking hockey uh, last week. Um, as part of my job, I didn't just come for fun, but it was fun. <laughs> and um, they shouted at me at one point, it needs to go a yard, and I did have to go, I don't know what a yard is. <laughs> <laughs> I think so, no, able to transfer themselves into the um, St Andrews 25 as the uh, rain now starts. Uh, said it was coming. Um, it's come a lot later than I expected. I think the girls now will be just looking for these last two minutes of the game with uh, the rain now coming down at quite a pace. <laughs> Arrington, Darcy here now looking just to put a ball but St Andrew's able to take that cleanly. Lev Mullen trying to make a nuisance of herself but St Andrews now have a two on one here with Verity. No defenders here to help. Ball was able to be played around Verity though. Able to make a fantastic save there. It's a great tackle from Verity. Not often you see a, a, clipper, a keeper make a, a clean tackle. Yeah, you see, you just see her. She's able to come in. She gets the ball first more than anything else, which means there's no foul against the attacker. But I think uh, Verity would be desperate to, to cling on to that clean sheet. That's it. We'll put that as Verity's best bits. Um, <laughs> we'll, I'll start a highlight reel of the season, and that that's going to be how it starts. I know both keepers in this game have had fantastic games. Andrew's keeper had a couple of unlucky moments, but has kept definitely kept the game to the the score it is now. And um, Verity has had had some moments where she's had some some pressure put on her. You saw within the first couple of minutes of the first quarter, um, a clean. Uh, kind of swipe away the ball and that's been then the story of the game so far for both the keeper of Arrington and St Andrews. As Arrington now look to just play the last minute off inside the Arrington, uh, inside the St Andrews 25 but only giving away a foul there was I think Orla Miller. <laughs> like I'm able to play that ball out the side. And that will also be the final touch of the game. Game will end with Arrington 4 0 against St Andrews. So they define their place at the top of the bottom six of the Women's Scottish Premiership. A fantastic game. From the Arrington perspective, um, it was touch and go at one point, very end to end. Um, lots of tennis hockey, as we, as we were saying, but into that third quarter, um, as the goal started going in, I think it kind of the tiredness crept in for St Andrews and you definitely saw Yeah, I think panic not panicking when it's when it's just that one goal gap is, is key and, and being able to just be patient and wait for that wait for that those those two th the second, third and fourth goal to kinda go in. You saw the nice thing they were speaking about uh, Julia Chapman being back at her a road club. Uh, both her and her sister at the Unistrath uh Unistrath, Unis St Andrews. Yeah. Um you saw there Julia there just giving big hugs to the girls that she used to play with here at Uddingston and always a nice thing to see in hockey is the um, the camaraderie and the, the sportsmanship that's across the, the sport but definitely when you're coming back to an old club to see your your former former teammates and also close friends is, yeah, is always definitely. nice. Both Lorna and Julia I know are still involved in the club and you still see them around um, and it's it's nice to see them still keeping in touch with plenty of people here at Uddingston. We now do get the great chance of looking back at the fantastic four goals from the game here. Starting off with this early short corner for Addingston. Set the tempo off nice and quick with this uh, deflection from Lucy. Also then give a chance though for St Andrews to learn what they were doing. But then you start to see this is where kind of started creeping in. The pressure is put on as um, Lev and Lexi work together to, to put that goal in the goal. Goal in the goal? That, the <laughs> ball in the goal. There we go. English. Um, and then Third quarter continued, given the second, qu second goal of the uh, the quarter, third goal of the game. Again, the teamwork you started seeing with 
that ball has been played back in for Lily. Coming off her, her Scotland duties and then the final goal here with Anna and again Lexi. Lexi again in that position. A pair of position just to play that ball around the keeper. Both keepers though definitely having fantastic games and it has been a very entertaining game I'd say. I um, can certainly say that it's probably one of the best games I've watched for, for the ladies because I've not been stressed during it but <laughs> um, a, a lovely game. The weather has managed to hold up. There was some, some fears beforehand from us up here that the, the weather might turn but Except for the wind, it's um, kept itself nice and at least slightly dry. From me, Finn, thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure, thank um, you guys for you, having you me. You saved me from being myself. and It's, it's been a, a good laugh being up here. Thank you. And uh, to all you for watching, uh, thank you for sticking around with us. And uh, make sure you come back for the final game on the 20th. And of, as always, keep an eye on our socials. But from me, thank you very much. Campbell will just strike herself, strike it from the back of the net.